Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Evans. This is my case study for the Missing Booster Club Fund. Case summary. Mr. Stevens is the current principal at George Washington Middle School. GWMS is located in a district that has seen a decline in student population and socioeconomic status of the families it serves. Recently, Mrs. Bowman, a parent of a student there, requested the school pay for her daughter's cheer trip with activity funds and Mr. Stevens declined. Later in the week, Mrs. Bowman was in charge of gate admissions at a game where she claimed they had to discard 10 admission tickets because they were torn. Mr. Stevens needs to investigate to find out if the tickets really were discarded or if someone had stolen money from the gate admission fund. Problem identification and analysis. What do we know here? We know Mrs. Bowman wants the school to pay for her daughter's trip. We know that Mr. Stevens, the principal, refused to pay. We know that Mrs. Bowman was in charge of gate admissions. We know that Mrs. Bowman reported tickets 78 through 88 were discarded. And we know that Mr. Dumas paid with a $50 bill. What do we need to know? We need to know who else worked the admission gate. Were the tickets actually discarded? What happened to the $50 bill Mr. Dumas paid with? Did someone else possibly pay with a higher bill? Is there a video, video surveillance system that we can check? The problem, did Mrs. Bowman or anyone else steal money from the gate admissions? Proposed plan of action. I think the best thing to do first is to call Mr. Dumas to verify he paid with a $50 bill. The fact that Mr. Stevens couldn't find that when he was going through the funds at the end of the night um, is what kind of, I feel like, started the suspicion here. And so I think it would be important to call Mr. Dumas to find out, to verify that he actually really did pay with a $50 bill since Mr. Stevens, the principal, did not see that happen. He was just going off what Mr. Dumas said. Um, I think it's also important to check video, video footage if it's available. That way you can check and see if he really did pay with a $50 bill, if Mrs. Bowman really did discard those tickets, and potentially if someone else paid with a higher bill. I think it would be important to speak with the second gate attendant operating under the assumption that there was a second gate attendant based off policies described at the beginning of the case study. Um, I think it would be a good idea to speak with the second gate attendant to see if they can confirm or not confirm that those tickets were discarded. And then another possibility there is to check the trash cans for the discarded tickets. When talking about a resolution here, I think it's really important First off, to keep in mind parental involvement and how important it is to the school itself since Mr. Stevens doesn't have an assistant principal. He relies really heavily on parental involvement as far as, as, far as volunteers go. Um, and so I think he needs to be really cautious about how he proceeds here. I think 100% he needs to investigate it, but he also needs to recognize how important that parental involvement is to keep his school running. Um, there's also no solid proof that means no action should be taken against Mrs. Bowman. I think we're operating under the guise here that we're suspicious of Mrs. Bowman because she was already upset with Mr. Stevens about not wanting the school to fund her daughter's cheer trip. Um, and so I think that that kind of puts the suspicion on Mrs. Bowman, but we have zero proof at this point. All we have is a, hmm, this is kind of weird situation going on here. So I think we need to be careful before we take any actions without proof. Um, I also think a resolution here would be to put someone else in charge of supervising money or in charge of supervising duties so that Mr. Stevens doesn't put that on the back burner during games. So if he could find a parent volunteer to maybe handle the supervising duties, he can be more present in the overseeing of money. I also think it would be really important here to update policies and procedures to include how to handle discarded tickets to prevent further issues. Unresolved issues here is that there clearly needs to be a better system for oversight. There needs to be a better system of oversight for exchanging of money. Um, another unresolved issue here is placating Mrs. Bowman. The way the case study made it sound, she was still not very happy <laughs> with Mr. Stevens for not wanting to pay for the cheer trip. And so I think there needs to be a way to figure out how to smooth that over without giving in to her because I stand by his decision to not pay for one individual's trip with money that's supposed to benefit the whole. Um, another potential unresolved issue here is without proof, we'll never actually know what truly occurred with that money. So that's where the video footage comes in. That's where corroborating her story with another gate attendant comes in or hopefully finding those discarded tickets.
um, what I was thinking here was how can we find out if the tickets truly were ripped and discarded? Could we look at video footage? Could we check the trash can? Could we talk with the second gate attendant? I was thinking about how we could just verify just so that all those suspicions are put to rest. Um, feeling, I was trying to put myself in Mrs. Bowman's shoes and how she was feeling, being told no, that they weren't going to fund her daughter's trip, and then working at the school that told you no, I was trying to see like, okay, maybe there's a motive there. Um, and as a parent, you're always wanting to do what's best for your kid and be able to give your kid everything. And so I was kind of thinking, okay, maybe there's a motive there. Um, and valuing the whole time I was valuing what's best for my school and what's best for my students. What do I need to do here to ensure I'm doing what's best for my kids? Effective management. I think to handle this effectively to help our management be more effective, I think we need to add policies and procedures for discarded tickets. Um, potentially, maybe if they are ripped, still hold on to them, but put them in the money container so that at the end of the night when you say, okay, these tickets were ripped, you have them right there to show that they were ripped and that's why you weren't using them. Um, I also think it's really important to ensure more than one person works the gate so that one person is not in charge of all of that money. Um, I think the principal should check on the money periodically throughout the game. I understand he had those supervising duties, but I also think that money is a really, I mean, that's where people typically tend to go wrong. So I think that that's something that he should really focus on staying on top of. And I also think it would be really important to be aware of who's handling money. Someone like Mrs. Bowman who is expressing a need for money might be better suited in a different role at that time. If she's still willing to help, maybe she can handle the supervising duties and you could put someone else who hasn't expressed a desire for the school to fund something in charge of money. Promoting social learning for all students, I think it's really important to follow up on this, to not just put it to rest and not follow up and investigate, just to make sure everything is as it says. Um, by following up, I think that establishes a culture of accountability to let people know you take the handling of your school's money very seriously. I think it's important to model a mindset of innocent until proven guilty. I think just because you're investigating, it doesn't mean that anyone has done anything wrong there and you can't just point fingers without solid proof. So always modeling that mindset of innocent until proven guilty. I also think it's important to ensure discretion while investigating. You don't want rumors flying around. You don't want to go talking to everyone and their dog about how you're concerned Mrs. Bowman stole money. I think discretion here is huge to make sure you don't burn bridges with parents who are so vital in keeping your school running. Um, and I also think it was really important that the principal demonstrates supporting the whole over an individual by declining to fund one individual's cheer trip that isn't necessarily school related um, because it doesn't with money that's supposed to benefit the whole school and not just one individual. As far as supporting academic learning for all students, I think it's really important to take into consideration the potential effects on parental involvement in the future by accusing without solid evidence. I've said this multiple times already, but I felt like the case study really put a lot of emphasis on how important parents are in being involved with school. And we know that those are important stakeholders. And so when you have that buy-in from them, when you have that investment, you wanna be really cautious about how you handle situations like this so that you don't lose that. Um, I also think it's really important to update policies like with discarded tickets to safeguard funds that are intended to support students learning. And I think it's really important to continue to stand by the decision to use PTO money for all students, not just one individual. I 100% support Mr. Stevens' actions in that, and I think that he needs to stand by that decision. I, earlier when I mentioned placating Mrs. Bowman, I don't think that placating necessarily means give her the money or pay for that trip, but find something to where she still feels supported, she still feels like her daughter is valued, but you also can't take money away from the entire building. Thanks.